the latest on the controversial pick for Trump's new administration. Robert F. Kennedy Jr., a longtime vaccine skeptic, is in line to be Secretary of Health and Human Services. Over the summer, when he was running for president as an independent, Kennedy talked with Chief Washington Correspondent Major Garrett about chronic childhood illness. That our, our children are the healthiest children in the world today. They're the sickest. 60% of our kids now have chronic disease. When my uncle was president, it was only 6%. And there's no other nation that has anything like that. We're mass poisoning our children with processed foods. We have a thousand ingredients in our foods that are illegal in Europe. Major Garrett joins us now from Washington. Major, good morning. So you sat down with RFK Jr. You've spoken to him about a lot of these health mm -hmm. issues. It is a controversial pick. What message do you think the president-elect is trying to send? First of all, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. helped elect Donald Trump. So this is a reward to him. And RFK Jr. has within the Trump world a constituency of his own. He's the only one Trump is allowed to rebrand MAGA, make America healthy again, MAHA which rose, Adriana and team, out of a part of the Trump constituency that is still deeply aggravated and resentful about all COVID restrictions and requirements. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. speaks to that. He raises a lot of legitimate issues. Is there too much corporate influence in foods in America? Is there too much corporate influence in drug regulation in this country? But he's also dead wrong on vaccines and refuses to be accountable for the things he has said falsely about vaccines for most of his career talking about those issues. And when you're talking about childhood vaccines, like for measles, mumps, and rubella, or polio, or chickenpox, his record is absolutely false, yet creates scare and fear among parents wondering what they should or can do. That's going to be a significant issue if, in fact, there's a full-fledged confirmation hearing and process for this nominee. Yeah, Major. Look, there's a lot of legitimate criticisms about the performance of many departments and agencies of the government, and yet there's still controversy behind these picks. I'm curious, when you add up all these controversial picks from the, the incoming Trump administration, what do they tell you about what the effort is, what the goal is in this second administration? That there is no desire to govern as we have known governing to be pronounced and practiced for the last four or five, maybe six, seven decades. This administration intends not only to take things out of Washington and relocate them in other parts of the country, resize, downsize, reimagine, and impose their will on the way they believe government should be structured. They are not just overturning the Biden-Harris approach. They are overturning the bipartisan approach to governing and bureaucracy in Washington that's basically been here since the end of World War II. That is how different, and some might say radical, this administration tends to be, and almost every single one of these cabinet appointees announced so far want to fulfill or at least pursue that kind of mission. Major, what are you hearing from um, Republicans, you know, especially those senators who will need, uh, who will be needed for confirmation? Well, let's bring up the confirmation question because it's a very real one. Will there be a full-blown confirmation process, which means public hearings and votes? President-elect Trump has already said, I'd prefer a recess appointment situation where the Senate agrees to recess, lets the president, once he assumes power, recess appoint these cabinet officials for two years without any evaluation whatsoever. Senate Republicans, including the newly elected majority leader, John Thune, have been equivocating about this question. So the question for the Senate is this, under Republican control, do you want to be the Senate? Do you want to retain constitutional advise and consent powers that have existed since the beginning of this republic? Or do you want to be a spineless supply clerk for the next president? That has to be resolved before we know anything about confirmations, if they're going to be up or down. 